So I wanted to try making a wooden knife, and I like the way this Kyocera ceramic kitchen knife I have looks, so I decided to use it as a template. So you'll have to excuse the hunting autofocus in the next couple of clips. I ended up just turning it off and setting focus manually. A friend of mine uh, upgraded his camera to a new Nikon Z6 and lent me his old Nikon 3100 to play with, and I still don't quite have the hang of using it yet. After tracing the rough shape, I cut it out at the bandsaw. Clarity of the DSLR really makes it easy to see the built up sawdust and cobwebs I never clean up. The trade off is that the nice shallow depth of field really blurs out the mess in the background. You win some, you lose some. After I got the blank cut out, I refined the shape on my little 1 inch Harbor Freight belt sander. If you were thinking about getting one of these, I'd recommend against it. I guess it would do okay if you really need one now, but it's so underpowered I can stop the belt and did several times while doing this knife just from pushing a little too hard. I found a nice piece of walnut on the workbench that I thought would make some nice scales for the handle. I was very tempted to use some blood wood, but it's a pretty good sized piece and I didn't want to cut it up just for this. I cut the scales roughly to shape, but left them oversized so that after they're glued on I could sand everything down flush. This premium wood glue is water resistant, has a fast set time, stronger than wood, water cleanup, and gives a tight bond too. Yeah? No? Alright, I'll just let you finish watching this and listening to the birds singing outside. After the glue dried, I took it out of the clamps, spun it around in my hand and looked at it a couple of times, and then held it in front of the camera. It's a bit of a chunky monkey, but we'll take care of that on the sand. This is the flip top cart from Drew Fisher at Fisher's shop and I will put a link to his build video and plans in the upper right hand corner. I used the Mighty Craftsman Oscillating Spindle Sander to further refine the inside of the handle. When I was done with that, I went back to the 1 inch belt sander, and you can see that I am sanding above the platen so that the belt will give the handle a more rounded off look instead of hard flat edges. While listening to the beautiful sounds of the songbirds, I described a line down the edge of the blade to roughly define where the two sides will angle together to form the cutting edge. Using that line as a visual guide, you hold the blade at a slight angle to the sanding platen and take long sanding strokes down the blade over and over again until you have achieved your cutting edge. Here I'm showing in this little demonstration, you want to make sure to hold the blade in a straight line the entire time and not tip the handle out at the end of the pass or you will blunt off the end of the blade. I did some final sanding with a 400 grit sanding mesh right as the neighbor's lawn crew showed up. I have a knack for knowing exactly when to film when the lawn crew shows up. Since it's intended for food contact, I'm just going to finish it with the same mineral oil that I used to finish my cutting boards. I 
had some of this Howard's Butcher Block conditioner in the garage, so I decided to use some of it because it has some beeswax and carnauba waxes in it that uh, should help repel water in the kitchen. Just look at that beautiful shine. I doubt you're going to be slicing a nice medium rare ribeye with one of these, but it'll work great for cheeses, spreads, or other quarantine delicacies. Don't forget to hit subscribe and follow me on Instagram for more delicious quarantine recipes. And in case you're wondering, yes, I did eat these. And yes, they were disgusting. Hopefully this will inspire you to go make something useful out of your leftover scraps. The knife, not the hot dog crackers. Do better than that. And until next time... Thanks for watching.